my team recently went to the market to source some RAM chips. And they were shocked to discover that simple 16 or 32 GB chips were now priced five times more than what they were just a few months ago. This is not just five or 10 percentage I'm talking about. This is five times. So that's 400 to 450 to 500 percent more. Why has this happened? And why has the consumer electronics market and basic memory chips market completely gone through the roof in terms of pricing? The allegation that AI is gobbling up the world slowly comes into relief here. And that is the topic we are going to investigate today. Welcome to Billion Hopes. This is Sandeep Manudhane, Mentor Sandy, bringing you AI for real impact. Let's begin. Is AI gobbling up the world? The memory chips crisis would definitely indicate so. As I said, we found that these chips have become prohibitively expensive and the vendors then told us that if you intend to plan certain custom-made PCs or augment your existing systems, you should do your purchases right away because it's not, I mean, it's no longer about the prices. In a few months, these things would become unavailable in the market. These are kind of unheard dynamics. It never used to be this bad. But what is actually happening is that the large AI companies in the world, the tech majors, are simply capturing the memory chips market because their own needs, the hyperscalers need for their giant data centers, whether on land or the proposed ones in space, needs far more than what all the memory chip makers in the world can produce. So they have literally become the captive centers. And then they do not bother about consumer markets the retail markets. You can do your own stuff, find out from wherever you can. And the impact of this may come on the secondary market as well, where if you go and buy a secondhand chip, even those prices may very soon shoot up. They already have started shooting up. So this perhaps is the beginning of a long dark shadow that the rise of AI may cast upon humanity itself. And hence, there is going to be a governance response and the social response to this sooner than later. It's best that we tackle it right up front. AI gobbling up the world. Before we move on, I invite you to check out our beautiful membership tiers on this Billion Hopes channel. Press the join button and you'll see the deliverables and the exclusive videos we bring in these channels. I welcome you to join us and join a community of learners. Thank you so much. And of course, if you still haven't, please subscribe to a free newsletter Tuesday and Friday. A complete gist of latest AI development subscription link in the comments. So this global memory chip shortage is primarily because the AI hyperscalers, all those building those giant data centers, promising us instant and rapid inference and all those wipe coding stuff, they are pushing up the RAM and storage prices. And so all the custom builds and PCs have become costlier. But it's not just about PCs. Any consumer electronic product which has a memory chip inside, which means every, every product will be costlier in a matter of just a few weeks. If you need to buy something, you have to do it right away. And I'm not kidding. This is what is happening right now. The giant tech companies flush with capital. They are simply outbidding smaller buyers. And they say, we want to build giant data centers, capture whatever is available in the market. So the big makers of these memory chips, they also have kind of lost interest in the retail market. And they are focusing only on the enterprise orders, becoming their captive suppliers. So the broader impact is on the entire electronic pricing market. This playlist is AI and the future of humanity. I took this topic in this playlist, particularly because I feel this may just be the beginning of a long dark shadow that AI may cast on humanity if it is not structurally, structurally reined in by the governance and social response at this time. Now, because I am from the AI industry, I would not at all want a social and governance response which takes to AI negatively. And that would mean a constraining and a restraining behavior on part of the AI majors themselves. That is the only logical conclusion one can draw from this. You know what memory chips are. You know how you measure them in GBs and where they fit in laptops and desktop PCs and smartphones and gaming consoles. In fact, those of us who have been into electronic thing and we have been loving these things, 
Some technical details here won't do any harm. You have the RAM, you have the flash storage, specialty memories of all shapes and sizes. And used for practically, as I said, every conceivable consumer electronic good. So you wish to see where all you are going to be hit very soon? Here. Yeah. Every single computer and laptop known to man today, every single smartphone and tablet, gaming consoles of all nature, digital cams, automotive electronics. The more sophisticated is the car, the more is the number of chips needed and higher quality chips needed. And this means that the rising cost of electronics, chips, will directly impact the final retail price of cars. So expect them to rise by a huge chunk. All the IoT and smart devices, eventually they all rely on memory chips and data centers and servers of the non-AI variety, the regular data centers, non-AI data centers. In fact, many of them may find augmenting their capacity impossible because no longer are memory chips available in the market. This is a classic case of AI cornering resources of the world purely for their own or its own augmentation. So far, the allegations against the AI industry, tech majors, hyperscalers, and that includes all Meta, OpenAI, Google, Anthropic, Amazon, everyone, anyone who is into AI at a foundational level. The primary allegation against them so far has been that they build these giant data centers, they end up putting tremendous pressure on the water resources, the energy resources, the land resources, and they are actually unsocial or antisocial to that extent. That is why many of them started suggesting that we'll take the data centers into space. But eventually, even if they take it to space, the memory chips are going to be built on planet Earth, right? Actually, you know, this takes me to a deeper question about humanity itself. We are not escaping planet Earth anytime soon. Let that be very clear. At the most, we'll have a few outposts on the moon. But any fancy notion of actually building a second civilization on Mars is purely fanciful. It's not going to happen in our lifetimes. It's not going to happen in many centuries from now. Whether or not it happens after that, with humans, with bots and robots and all, we can always do it even in a few months from now, talking of real humans. So it is this earth that we have to ourselves. And unfortunately, we consider that this earth is done and dusted. It's going to be destroyed. So anyway, we must build. Why are we not focusing on preserving this planet for us from a human perspective? That's another deeper social question that mankind has to confront sooner than later. So this is another beautiful infographic that explains this whole uh, situation. So where exactly are memory chips used? Now you know that nobody will escape this massive resources grab by AI. And I think another six months or so, people across the world are going to resist this resource grab in a very major way. So a natural question which can now be asked is, can we not have other memory chip manufacturers come up and augment capacity? Of course, we can have it. But these capacities don't really exponentially grow the way we think they should. Because a whole supply chain, a very complicated supply chain is involved, rare earth materials are involved, and you know what that means, right? So the core functions, these are the core functions for the memory chips and this is how you actually measure them so that's technical we can leave that for the moment now comes the villain for the moment now i am an ai industry professional and i'm still using this word because i think we can all be mature enough to see things for what they are so what happens where do the memory chips actually go so this is the ai model huge complicated massive models with thousands of layers millions of artificial neurons and massive hardware needs, as you can see here. So to be able to just build the next generation of AI model, the AI company is taking preventive steps in advance. And they want to preclude any possibility that tomorrow they augment capacity at the coding level, software level, build level, and then they don't have the memory chips to support it. So they are just turning all the memory chip makers into captive suppliers. And that is where the massive problems are propping up for the rest of the world. I hope that point is made. So as I said, the AI hyperscalers and data centers, 
they are straining the supply chain worldwide. In my city, in my country, I've al already seen the prices go up by 4x or 5x. And that is unprecedented. Never ever in my life have I seen that. And these are the things which are going to be costlier in just a few months from now. And so that means if you're actually planning on purchasing any of these, do it straight away because there is no way any government can actually stop the price rise. It's the fundamental structural issue. You'll have to stop the AI hyperscalers. And given the way Trump and US is completely pro big tech right now, I don't think anyone can stop the hyperscalers for now. Eventually, a social and governance response alone will. So this is coming. This massive crisis is coming. And although this is largely true for the first hand market, but for how long will the second hand buy and sell market remain insulated from this reality? It won't be. That's coming too. So if you can surprise what exactly is happening right now, AI hyperscalers are absorbing disproportionate memory supply. Never ever in history has this happened. So memory manufacturers are very happily reallocating capacity to high margin segments, quoting any price they want and getting it. So why would they bother about haggling with the consumer level folks like us? PC and DIY computer prices will rise sharply and not just PC and DIY. All of this, as I said, not good, not good for economy overall. So this will be a classic technological headwind for GDP growth. Just wait and watch what happens. People will simply stop buying things, right? Spot market volatility up, smartphone electronic pricing pressure already building. And within a few weeks, when the whole thing explores, things will simply go through the roof. Smaller OEMs, they'll become powerless. Regional brands, powerless. And this is another extremely dangerous signal of power concentrating in just a few companies. Because when the smaller player, regional OEM, they all lose their bargaining power. What is left? Only the big players. So that classic oligopoly is being created. Monopolies, duopolies, oligopolies, you can fix any name and in some way, some facet, the name is absolutely justified. That's not good. That's not good for the world. That's not good for anyone. And supply chain concentration risks are rising. So that's the hyperscaler demand vortex creating problems for everyone here. So that's how things are today. We have created a wonderful suite of technologies called AI and machine learning. We have taken instant intelligence creation to the hands of billions of human beings. Individual productivity rise is now not uncommon. People are working with text, generating code, creating applications, creating beautiful creatives. And they are doing it with aplomb. They are doing it very happily. And it's also leading to a lot of positive upward earnings revision for many who are willing to learn. But the net negative for the economy will now bubble up slowly over the next few weeks, as I have just explained. Did you like this explanation? What other topics would you want me to take up in the uh, coming videos of this playlist, Future of Humanity? Now, since you are here, I request you to please subscribe to my channel, Billion Hopes. And there are multiple playlists on which I am tackling different aspects of AI. And I invite you to check beautiful learning courses available on my academy. We have Like I Am 10 series for anyone who doesn't know anything in AI. This is a very good starting bundle. AI Like I Am 10, Generative AI Like I Am 10, and AI Technicals, all three together. And then for corporates, there are beautiful force multiplier and CXO mentoring programs available. So with that, we conclude today's or rather serious discussion on the future of humanity due to excessive market power getting concentrated in a few big AI players. Not good for anyone. Not good for anyone. This is Mentor Sandy bringing you AI for real impact. Your suggestions, your comments, everything is welcome. Thank you so much. See you soon again. Okay.